welcome in this short video we'll see how a team uses various methods to solve a problem so we'll have uh, different roles of team members and there are a sequence of steps in which these various uh, uh, team members play different roles in their activity so these are four different main roles that are part of a team and they play complementary um, activities to solve the problem now these are ideas that have uh, taken from the reference that are shown here from harvard dce and mind tools so you can read more about it in the uh, links given there so the four steps uh, the four roles are a generator who generates the problem an ideator who finds possible solutions or gives ideas about the solutions to the problem a planner who selects among the various ideas and uh, plans the work and the actual solver who actually implements it and finally shows the demonstration of the uh, solution so this is written put in a circle because uh, the major big problem that you are uh, trying to solve has to be broken down into smaller and smaller problems and which you can solve in smaller cycles so once you solve a small problem you go and attack the next problem and then once you have uh, solved three or four problems together you that will itself help you solve a bigger problem so it goes in a cycle and each one of this uh, roles have different things to play and in the following slides we are going to elaborate on this uh, various steps finding the problems uh, means finding the problems find the facts define the problems find the ideas select and implement along with the steps we'll also identify what is the role of each of this team member so what does the generator do what will be a personality trait of a generator uh, and what are the typical skills of this various uh, members in the team so generator is a generator of problems a person who is who is actively can look for problems they have to find problems they have to read a lot of articles they have to participate with the uh, ultimate uh, beneficiary to find experience what is the actual problem that they are facing uh, try to articulate it in words discuss with others and so on so there's a lot of communications involved here reading uh, uh, talking uh, listening and so on they should also be capable of putting things together and seeing future problems anticipating if there are new problems that can come either from the existing scenario because other things in the environment are changing or because the solution that you're providing can change something else so the first step is to identify the problems then you have to find facts about the problem this essentially means you have to study the literature it's not that um we are the only ones who have found this problem many people would have found this before uh who have uh, many people like us not only in uh, this institution but in several institutions throughout the world would have come across this problem what have they done to find a solution what factors affect the uh, problem and what were the issues faced by other groups they there were some obvious solutions why were those solutions not considered what were the issues they faced and with the maybe there are some solutions that are currently available what are the uh, limitations of that can you improve do, do we need to improve that and so on so these are all first uh, a very important fact finding mission is required because if we don't do this it's very likely that somebody else has solved it and you're solving another problem the sa same problem a uh, waste of time there'll be actually a business which is actually uh, selling this product already in the market and all that you invested 
will go waste. Okay, so finding fact is very important. So once this is clear, so you're not going to look for one problem. You have to look at three, four problems and look at uh, around that multiple kinds of uh, solutions that are currently attempted. These are all existing facts. You have to do a survey of existing facts. So once that is clear, you clearly define the problem. So this problem definition is what we saw in an earlier video, which is identifying the ultimate beneficiary, their pain point. Okay, so that problem definition, what is the importance of the problem? What is the prevalence and so on? And what is the scope of what you're going to try and uh, propose? That is the pain reliever. What is it going to solve? You kind of define, okay, it is, they have 10 different problems, but I'm going to solve only one or two, right? This particular user group has 10 problems. I'm going to solve one or two. So this is the uh, steps that are involved in generation of the problem. And the people who are playing this role of a generator, what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to actually find problems, which essentially means they have to communicate between various stakeholders and the team members. So the generator of the problem has to be a very good communicator. So they have to be able to listen to people. They have to be able to participate with them. They have to be able to talk to team members. They have to be able to empathize with uh, uh, your customer uh, by participating in what they're actually doing and then feeling, not only feeling uh, their uh, mental difficulty, but also say physical or labor-oriented labor difficulties and so on. Um, usually being somebody who is very good in communication and uh, can empathize with people are also usually people who keep the team together. So usually when you have a large team of people working and people are going to have differences in opinion, people will say something, somebody else may not like it. And it is the role of a generator because this is a person who has, has a feel talking to the um, customer or the stakeholder and to the team. So they are the ones who are bridging the communication between the team and the outside world. And they are the ones who have to bring some um, uh, normality or resolve the differences between the team members. They are typically good at uh, documentation because it involves finding facts, organizing facts, defining the problem and so on. So they're typically good at organization of facts, uh, documentation and presentation uh, skills. Some of the tools that you can use are PEST and CATWO. You can just do a, a, a Google search and find out what they mean. Um, for the technical uh, literature, if you want to find what has been done in this problem, uh, one of the good scientific search engines is called as Scopal, which is which has uh, most uh, libraries, including IIT Bombay, has subscription to the search engine called Scopus. The second role is the ideator of solutions. By now, we have defined the problem very clearly. Now, ideation means guessing solution. We don't know what will work, but it is just guess solution, just some out of the box solutions. Uh, before that, you write down obvious solutions, okay? Write down obvious solutions. Some of the solution might have been already tried. That will, the generator will already tell you, but this person, the, idea, the role person who is uh, uh, having the role of an ideator has to find new solutions, which could be, some of them could be obvious, but uh, this person may not know, right? But then, you have to come up with as many solutions as possible. Then come out with completely new. So by this time, you will know by interacting with the generator that some things have been tried, some things have failed and so on. And then you come up with completely uh, creative out of the box solutions and present it to the entire team and get it validated by not only the um, uh, generator who knows the literature or the existing solutions, but also other people in the solution who are more practical, who know something will work and something will not. So what is the role of an ideator? Comes up with tons of crazy ideas. 
and it need not be practical many of them may not be uh, uh, working at all but the whole thing is they are very creative and uh, they come up with very novel ideas so if you have some uh, uh, talent towards coming up with new ideas you might want to uh, uh, be an ideator of solutions in the team they are typically good at drawing arts or abstract thinking Uh, some of the tools that they can use are uh, solid modeling tools so think suppose you you are thinking of a product which is uh, solid and you want to model it so if you are uh, okay with uh, modeling in actual material you can go to a lab and fabricate it otherwise you can also use solid modeling tools like uh, blender and freecad to generate your ideas the next step is planning of the tasks now once you have let's say if not tons maybe tens of solutions you have to pick and choose only some of them because you don't have infinite time to solve all of them and there will be practical constraints in uh, solving something so the next role is the planner who is supposed to look at these solutions select them and evaluate them against what resources that you are i will you have with you and what is the time constraint resources in the form of money um, uh, human talent skill or something which you can outsource and get it done so whatever that you can plan and do within this time okay so this is done by the planner so the planner needs to be able to evaluate and select one or two things and even that break down into smaller and smaller tasks which can be achieved in say a week or two okay so if you keep something which is uh, for which you have to plan for i am going to do something over a period of one month uh, you may not have you may not get regular feedback so it's important to break the plan, uh, break the tasks into smaller tasks okay and then clearly tell to the other team members who are going to implement you're going to do this you're going to do this and you're going to do this when and how okay so this planner it does carry carries out these things so what is the role of a planner as said before evaluates and selects practically feasible ideas that's the important thing that practically feasible what is practically feasible yes they have some experience in finding flaws and limitations they uh, are very good at finding flaws and limitations mistakes and other things because they have from their pre previous uh, experience or hands on experience they generally know what works and what does not work okay and they also take care in planning detail uh, work for each of this uh, other people in the team not only plan but also monitor whether something has been done in a particular time and they maintain a record of uh, weekly meetings what has been done whether something is missing and so on so what are the personality traits which is i've already told you that they are well read uh, hands on experience from previous pro uh, projects that have worked on similar projects they generally have an intuition of what works and what does not and they are good at laying out tasks something like in spreadsheets or other tools some of the tools they can use as just uh, plain google sheets or any other uh, spreadsheets we can share with others and there are some advanced uh, project management tools such as flock flock trello and jira you can uh, look it up and the last step and the role is that of the solver so till now everything was on um, air pen and paper and so on that nothing has actually come out so it is the role of the implementer to actually carry out these planned tasks week by week day by day so that typically for a technical problem means that developing a physical model um, or a physical means something using material a 3d model and so on or a mathematical model which you solve or you develop some algorithms to solve and so on and at the end of the day once you have solved it you 
demonstrate it. So demonstrate the working physical model or in case of mathematical equations or uh, uh, computations, you present the analysis in graphs, in 2D plots, in uh, uh, 3D visualization and so on. A, a role, as I said, uh, carries out the modeling, design and the final solution. And not only that, also carry, uh, analyzes the results very carefully. A typical personality traits of a solver is somebody who, who is, likes to work alone independently. Unlike others who have a lot of dependence, they, they probably get disturbed when there are so many people uh, on them. Okay? Left, uh, when they're left to themselves, they work uh, much better. They're very focused and efficient in getting things uh, uh, implemented. They're not usually swayed by emotions and their uh, skills are, they excel in analytical and uh, coding skills. Some of the tools that uh, solver can use is this method of uh, Polya's principle in problem solving, which we'll discuss in another video. Um, there are field solvers, they're open uh, uh, form solvers, which can solve uh, fluid-based uh, thermal reaction and that kind of um, uh, multiple physics solvers, which is typically used in chemical engineering. And they're also able to, you can use this uh, uh, analysis tool for graphical analysis called as uh, Paraview. Thank you.